I remember, I remember the, the happiest I've ever been in my life. Um, now, I'm not talking about being married to my wife over uh, 20 years, raising our son and having a great house, uh, any of that. I'm talking about there's a one moment where I just felt pure happiness. And, and everybody has their, their moment. Uh, for me, I was uh, maybe 17 years old. I had already hitchhiked uh, across the United States one time, and I, I believe I was on my second time around hitchhiking across the United States. And I remember I was somewhere in Montana. I, I wasn't on an interstate, I, one of the other highways that go through Montana. I'm, I'm not sure where it was. But I remember this vast expanse of, of space around me, a road that went straight, and you could see a truck coming 20 minutes before it ever got to you, and you could hear it for another 10 minutes after it has passed you. And I remember hitchhiking and standing there at 17 years old with maybe 50 bucks in my pockets and a backpack, and uh, looking up at that big sky, it really is a big sky in Montana, just a, but I don't know why they make it Carolina blue. Um, but it's a beautiful blue sky and uh, a breeze just kind of caressing the grass and rustling through the blades of grass and no, no traffic had been by for quite a while. And I just remember this epiphany I had, if 17-year-olds can in fact have an epiphany, that, that this might be the happiest I have ever been in my life and, and ever would be. And I have to say it was. It was a moment where I felt spiritually completely no stress, no obligations, no timetables, no responsibilities, just a true connection to the environment I was in and uh, not a care in the world. Didn't think about where I was going to be that night, nothing. It was just this uncomplicated, beautiful moment. I remember at that moment, uh, reaching into my blue jeans, just sticking my hands in my pockets, and uh, they were e empty except for a key ring. I had a metal key ring in my pocket, and I pulled it out and put it on my hand, and I thought to myself that this is how I can measure in my life the level of happiness I have. The fewer key rings, the happier, or keys on my key ring, the happier I will be. And you know, it, it really, it worked out that way. Throughout my life that I found the more I was burdened with responsibilities, um, obligations, um, materialistic things, I would have, um, overall less happiness. I mean, there's these moments of, yeah, look at me, I got a new truck, or, ooh, honey, we bought the new house, and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's all good. But it wasn't this pureness, this spiritual, or this, this calmness of, of pure happiness, you know. And those people that have experienced that, you, you may have, the your happiest moment would be maybe when your firstborn child was born, or when he or she said, I do, um, th there can be many, many things, but you know it. If you think about it, you should be able to pinpoint that feeling. And it's a narcissist. It's totally selfish. It's a totally selfish thing. It's not about, I love my wife and she makes me the happiest, or which is completely true, you know, or look at this house. I've worked so hard. I'm so proud of it. I'm so happy. We're in Bermuda on vacation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we all get those things, but I'm talking about that one feeling you have, and hopefully some of you will have had that um, feeling, okay? So that's kind of where I was at. Uh, Minimalist. I had really nothing. I'm hip boy. I, I had a backpack, but you can't get much lower than, than that as far as materialistic things and being a minimalist. So before we go any further, let's talk about the difference between what is a minimalist. Well, first of all, we have to figure out what is a materialism. You know, are you materialistic or are you not? Blah, blah, blah. Now, it's been defined uh, a lot that it's a belief uh, 
uh, in uh, the material world, uh, like a cause and effect, um, uh, that everything in our world, in our universe, is an is based on materialistic things, uh, water, wind, sand, cars, new house, uh, all of these things. It's based on that philosophy. Uh, it has um, mutated into um, just kind of a buzzword like, oh, you're so materialistic or something like that. But essentially, that's kind of where it's at. Some people have assigned it more to atheists because the idea is that if you're materialistic, uh, you, you separate more of a connection. I don't know if we're going to label it that way with atheists or agnostics or, or whatever. But um, basically, for a definition, materialism is pretty much kind of like the, the dependency of... of, of uh, your emotions or your values based on materialistic things, okay? That may or may not be a bad thing. Uh, one of the points I have is that happy people are happy people. Unhappy people are unhappy people. It's just that simple. Now, you can be extremely happy, not to have a care in the world, and you have materialistic things, and uh, there's not an issue with that. No one's saying that everybody has to go live in a cave up, uh, you know, in, in the Himalayas or something. Uh, you, you can have what you have. But my interpretation of materialistic um, needs or addictions is when it starts to replace and be the crutch uh, that gives you this like a drug in order to uh, deal with other things in life. And you can know if you're materialistic or not. Um, you, you just have to be honest with yourself. I remember um, years and years ago, there was a guy named Father Martin, and he was very knowledgeable in Alcoholics Anonymous. And uh, I heard one of his stories, and I don't know the exact details, but essentially he was saying that one time he was in Alaska doing a radio show, uh, late night, like 2 o'clock in the morning, middle of the night radio show in Anchorage about alcoholism. And this one guy called up and he says, Father, you know, I, I have a bunch of beers during the week, maybe two or three beers a day, not a big deal. And, it, and on the weekends, I might buy a case, okay? I might drink the case on Saturday or I might buy another one on Sunday, but Monday I'm back to work. And then it's just a couple beers a day. I don't see a problem in that. Do you think I'm an alcoholic? And Father Martin says, hey, I like M&M's. I sometimes will buy a package of M&M's on Monday, maybe on Wednesday, and take some to work. And, uh, and on the weekends, maybe I might buy, you know, that 16-ounce package, that extra large package is a treat, maybe the peanut M&M's, you know. Um, but what I don't do is I don't call some guy I don't even know at 2 o'clock in the morning to ask him if I have a problem with M&M's, okay? So the point about materialism is you've got to look at this yourself. Do you have so much stuff in your house? Do you have, are you so much underwater financially that you have to do a job you don't want or work harder than you need to? And um, you got to look at, honestly, if you're really happy with that. Are you happy with what you're doing? And if not, then you, you make changes. It's just that simple. So, um, that's what materialistic and materialism is to me, is if you can recognize some kind of a, a, a problem, you know, with it. I mean, you don't have to call me up or email me. Do you think I have a problem because I happen to own a new BMW every year? Well, you just the fact that you're sending a complete stranger an email asking says that you probably have given it some thought. So the only one that cares about you is really you. So it's a decision you have to make. Okay, so all of that's done. Let's talk about minimalism. Now, what minimalism is doing is reducing that clutter, is making a decision on what is important in your life. What kind of impact does all of that stuff have? Is it truly important to you? And if not, making steps to get rid of it. This is different than having a moral, ethical, and loving responsibility to the people close to you. 
If it brings you pleasure and there's no shackles to it, you know, knock yourself out. But you have to kind of go through that. And this is a great way to look at your life. What's important to you and what's really holding you back from uh, changing jobs to a better job that may pay less, leaving the job regardless, um, moving, uh, doing something with less. Uh, the great thing, as you saw on some of my earlier videos, like on changes, um, Sometimes the worst that can happen is that, you know, what is the worst that's going to happen? You probably won't die if you make a change by getting rid of your BMW or the 72-inch flat screen TV. You're not going to die. So those are some things to think about. Okay, so let's talk about what minimalism isn't. If you Google it, if you go onto YouTube, you're going to see some of the most ridiculous things. Now, there's some good stuff out there. But you got people that try to really kind of put it into a box. People need to put things into a box and to, and to categorize stuff so they can understand it. Oh, you know, to be a minimalist, minimalist, you have to look at things that you have not used in 90 days at home and things that those things that you don't plan on using for 90 days and get rid of it. Sometimes um, th there's other people that say there's... Uh, uh, you got to have no more than 50 things in your life. You cannot eat complicated foods. It has to be very basic foods. Uh, I saw one on a website where the complexity of the colors of your sheets is not minimalist. You know, in my humble opinion, that's just garbage, okay? Minimalism is a tool that helps you develop freedom and focus on to, uh, away from your materialistic things that are anchoring you down uh, and, and uh, limiting your happiness. And it's just that simple. There are no um, magic formulas or anything. I have always have been uh, minimalist. Uh, you can ask any of my friends. You know, I, I'm able just to walk away from most everything I have. I had a guitar that was that's valued at four thousand or five thousand dollars, an acoustic guitar, uh, and it was signed by Tony Rice. Uh, I have pictures of him signing it and with me, and he's like one of the greatest bluegrass guitar players ever. Certainly a thing of value. Sold it like that. Time to move on. I need a little bit of extra money. I didn't need it. I wasn't like I was selling it because I had bills to pay. I was just getting ready to change my life and move to Mexico, and that extra money would come in handy. And I didn't think uh, that guitar might survive that trip or that I wanted to lug it down there. Um, I absolutely don't have any materialistic uh, needs. The camera I have, the computers, all of the things are great. I could lose them, I could get rid of them, buy some more, but those are only facilitating um, uh, my YouTube and social media work. Th that's really it. Otherwise, um, I really don't need that much. When I plan on leaving Mexico to go to Nevada in August, I'm going to be taking a day pack with this camera that you're watching me on and um, my laptop change of underwear, some shorts, and an extra shirt or two, and sandals. And that's about it for the first week uh, until Marvy comes, we have a van, then we might pick up clothes that we need and build on the things we need. So we're really going to be focusing on a minimalist uh, lifestyle. Not, again, to have the spiritual awakening, but it just makes things a lot easier when you're willing to let go of things. You're not burdened trying to figure out where are you going to fit them inside your RV or your van or whatever you have and, and getting real upset that you have to give things away. So anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about was... Um, that whole concept of minimalism, I was on a website and I saw these guys trying to outline all of these rules about it that seems to be important. So um, it's, it's just not that way. So I hope you liked it. Um, it's a little thing in Mexico, people going by selling stuff. But uh, anyway, I hope you liked the video. You know what to do to subscribe and to like and all of that. We really appreciate it if you give the thumbs up. That kind of tells YouTube uh, that uh, we're, we're doing all the right stuff. Also, give me your comments. Feel free to write down below. So remember to summarize, just very simply, happy people are happy people. Unhappy people are unhappy people. You're going to be uh, happy whether you, if you're a happy person, you're going to be happy if you're truly happy. 
spiritually happy. It doesn't matter if you have a, a 72 inch TV because you know that if it goes away, it's not a big deal. If you're an unhappy person, getting rid of stuff uh, is not going to fix your life. But these are things to think about. And finally, I will close with this. Uh, this has been a philosophy of mine, a philosophy of mine since uh, I first heard um, Pete Seeger uh, say this back in the 70s at a Wolf Trap concert. Uh, and I live by this. And here it is to close off. Um, we are born in simplicity, but we die of complications. Thanks. I'll see you again.